What's going on everybody? It's your boy Payne. Welcome back to another Omni Heroes video. All right guys, got one for you here today that I think is being asked from a lot of different people and that is the best teams to do celestial floors for specific bosses. So I'm going to cover one boss at a time and give you guys various lineups that you can do that's helped me actually advance through these and get to higher floors. So let's start off with the celestial trials right here and i'm going to start off with the one that i'm at floor 44 with and i'm going to show you guys the strategy behind this and how you want to tackle it based on what you plan to use okay so the rune drops here you guys can tell are going to be the woodland epics and also the divine epic so this is going to be great for your divine heroes and woodland heroes obviously right the intel on the boss that you guys should know about is fairly straightforward blood hell queen arcadina's moth infest the battlefield like a plague and they have a terrifying revive effect okay so the recommended synergy here is going to be valianters so i'm going to show you guys how to set it up whether you have divine heroes or not divine heroes obviously and and demon deviant heroes will help, help you get further but we'll show you both both ways to do it now i can't advance any further in this floor without going an inch from killing her uh, i just need a little bit more cp and i'll be able to get it done but i'll still show you guys the strategy behind this and how to tackle it so first boss skill you should know about is chaos orb attacks all enemies dealing 200 percent damage this can actually one shot you if you don't have the proper setup going okay so we're going to talk about that as well and then her other active is going to be this one here. Now, this is the one that's going to actually hit the hardest, but it is the longest cast. It is four rounds. So attacks all enemies dealing 500% damage to everybody. Again, you see here the CD is four rounds versus the CD here being two rounds, and it is cast right away. So this one does take longer, but this is the one you really, really got to look out for. So I'm going to give you a little trick on this one and how to kind of counter it if you have the proper tools to do so. So we're going to talk about that as well. And then lastly, you're going to see this passive over here called Bloodbath. Whenever the minions die, they get restored. 50% of their hp specifically but this can also play an advantage for you okay so let me tell you guys how this is going to work so you're going to jump in here you're going to set up the following teams and you're going to see she has two boss mercenaries with her she's got medusa here whose counter is going to be uh Dullahan and merlin and then you've got yourself healing um lachesis and she's got uh lily and, and leah as the counter uh gwyn as the counter and nyx as the counter okay so um, here's what each of them do. Applies Revitalize on all enemies, restoring 50% of max HP every two rounds. You want that to be absolutely gone. You have to counter this one way or another. Uh, and then the other way is going to be Onslaught here. This is not that bad. It applies 10 stacks of increased attack on the enemies, increasing their attack by 25%. This cash in each round, it's not that big of a deal to be quite honest. The reason why it's not a big deal, and I'll explain to you why shortly. Now, the buff you want to use depends on what team you're going to go with. So I'm going to show you guys two teams here that are going to conquer this fairly early on. Now, you may not be able to get to this floor, like floor 44 or 45, uh, depending on this, but you will have to do two different things. So, if you're going to use Elune with uh, Apatros and uh, Theamus, you're going to want to actually change the buff to the de reduce the defense of minions by 50%. I'll show you guys why real quick. Okay, so I'm going to take Elune out here just to show you guys. Now, remember, there's a lot of RNG involved. Sometimes you'll kill an opponent really quickly. Sometimes you won't. So don't let it discourage you if you don't want to. Now, this team here specifically, guys, is going to absolutely be a, a knockout for you. And the reason why, and I'll, I'll explain to you shortly, um, is because the Deviants here, one, two, three, specifically, will give you guys the holy shield that'll last you for three rounds or three turns at least so it'll completely negate the first chaos orb that she does not killing anybody and giving you a full advantage to kill off a lot of these guys so you can see here right over here is what i'm talking about deviant right so at the start of the battle receives three stacks of holy shield and also a stack of regular shield as well which helps uh and then you also get attack up by 20 percent and leech by 30 percent so you're going to do more damage, so you don't really need the attack up bonus here outside of the outside of what you get from them. Now, Theomus is here for a reason, specifically for this debuff. The reduced, reduction of defense of minions is you want her to final slash a minion, and when she kills that minion, she's going to do fi she's going to do a follow up AOE on every single opponent here, and then when the minion gets revived, she'll do it again and again and again and again, and continuously doing final slash on the opponents as much as she possibly can, and continuously AOEing everybody down. Right, so you definitely want to have that there. Now, Abatros is there specifically to give everyone the, the the buff because most here are going to be physical damage dealers, as you can see, everyone actually is a physical damage dealer. So you definitely want to have the minion one for that. Now, I'm going to do this for you, but I'm going to show you guys the relics I'm using here. So I've got myself the Bonesaw. Uh, let's go back in here. 
It's really, really good. Uh, the reason why you want this one activated specifically is because two reasons. Number one, it actually does do frontline damage to everybody, so it'll it'll hurt them. It'll also give the synergy for the Valinators, which you have everybody there, a limit of three synergy mates, and you have three of them there, or at least two in this case. Um, and that'll be enough, or actually no, we get four, sorry, four of them. Uh, and that'll be enough here. Now the counter hero is very important to note. Now, my counter hero here is Nyx. So you must have a counter hero to take away this healing. So what does the countering do? Well, it essentially stops the healing from happening, right? That's the whole purpose of this. Activate ruin skills, revitalize is removed. You have to have that or else you're not going to go anywhere. So one of the counter heroes must be in place. So in my, in my case, it's Nyx, all right? Um, so here's all the recommended units that are there. I can switch my Mastima over to another recommended unit such as Karnak or um, uh, Kath Katarina, that works as well too, just so you guys are aware. I have him there because he just does a lot of damage for me, right? So let me show you guys how this works. I'm not gonna skip the battle, okay? We're gonna actually watch this. So make sure my skip battle's not on, make sure, okay, good. So let's go ahead and try this out. Now we're getting, remember, there's a lot of RNG. I've been to a point where she's got one HP and I've been to a point where she's got, oh, this is actually the wrong team. Actually, hold on. Okay, while I have this active, let me explain to you guys how this one works. Similar setup here, the only difference here is going to be Elune is going to actually be built to attack the boss, and you don't want this on, okay? You actually want the boss one. So actually, let me let me get out. Let me just get out here. You'll see, you'll see how this works. Here's the bone saw. You see it hits everybody, right? Attack down, revitalize. So you can see what the holy shield is gonna do shortly. See, it takes away a full damage, and then she's gonna cast that, and it's not gonna kill anybody. That's the most important thing. Now these two, like Apatros does her special, that's what you want her to do, that's the whole goal, is you want the attack up, and now you're gonna see pretty much how the rest of it's gonna go. Okay, so there you go. Like that's where you want now, okay, let's see if Nyx actually, how much damage Nyx does here. Look at that damage, look at that damage, guys. Okay, so Mark is on that opponent, we don't really care about that, we actually want, oh, see the missing is gonna be, so this is where the RNG comes in place, right? The missing is gonna cause that to happen, where you're gonna, you're, if you miss, you're gonna have to sometimes start over again. Unfortunately, there's the missing again, right? That's just inevitable, unfortunately. That's just gonna happen. So we're gonna fast forward this, and I'll show you guys the problem with that, that right there. So let me go back. The, for this team here, you actually want reduction of, of the HP. And here, we're gonna fast forward it a bit so you guys can kind of see how it works in terms of how much damage it does, okay? So watch. Look, see, better damage that time. Lachesis uh, was gone. And watch, I'm gonna do a couple of skips, okay? Just so you guys can kind of see the, the difference in RNG. Look at that. Almost dead, right? And if you look here, stats wise, you can kind of see who's doing the most amount of damage, right? So Mastima is doing almost no damage at all. So he can probably be removed, but he's in there for one reason and one reason only right now. And that's to give, um, that's to have the, uh, the extra holy shield. So if we remove him, for example, let's put in Dorabella, okay? Just somebody who has a little bit more ethereal damage there, uh, AOE damage, right? She's the she's the only ethereal here. I'm only putting her in only because of the damage though. So let's just see what happens if I do that, okay? Let's just do fat, we'll do a fast forward here and see if we can get a difference in numbers. Like, like numbers weren't that bad, right? So try again. And then after this, what I'm, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take Dorabella out and I'll tell you the reason why. You don't want Dorabella if you have Katarina. So like, like they did no damage at all. So watch this now, watch the difference. If you put Katarina in, essentially what should happen is Katarina's should be buffed off of uh, Atropus's um, uh, physical damage buff because she's a physical damage dealer. So let's see if this helps more. Okay, let's actually watch the battle and see what happens. So now you only get two holy shields. You don't you don't get three, which was the original intent was to have three with Mastima. So now you're gonna get two only. Okay, so watch what happens now. You're gonna lose. You're probably gonna lose a unit a lot quicker this time. And then we can actually swap out a loon here. And I'll show you guys how it looks without a loon, okay? So there's one, two attack. Okay, now we have two more left. This is going to take away these twos right there. Like, you, now you can see everyone else doing their moves. Here's, here's where we have to capitalize, okay? This is where it's going to matter the most. So nobody can really miss here. If we see anybody miss, it's a problem. So there's a miss right there. You saw that, right? Big miss, huge problem. You don't want that happening. Okay. Here's the hammer. The decent damage. This can't miss. If this misses, we're in big trouble. Okay, that's huge damage right there. Now, she's going to mark her, which, oh, uh, see, she missed again. So this is what I'm talking about, right? The RNG aspect of things gets really hard when she's when people are missing. Okay, so she's dead. She's dead. And now I've still got 
two units alive, three units alive that can still do fairly good damage. But the problem is I don't have enough alive. So this is why it's important to have the Holy Shield. Now, here's the other strat I was referring to, okay? The other strat is this. A lot of you guys are not going to have this relic, okay? What you actually want to do here is you want to have, um, I believe it's this relic here that gives you a holy shield, okay? So we're gonna put that one in instead. So watch what happens here. So we're gonna try this out, okay? Now this relic, the shuriken, with, or the, the two swords, which is the Avenger relic, actually, if you have its passive unlock, it will actually give you a stack of holy shield, and I'll show you guys how it works out, okay? So watch, she's gonna remove these holy shields, but as soon as we cast this, we're gonna have another one on, on, on there, so nobody actually dies from the initial onslaught that happens after we do all of our specials, okay? So let's let's take a look and see how this works out. Yeah, these misses are really bad. How do you, you know, a lot of people are asking how to increase accuracy. One way is to do it through the um, the the Sage Tome. You guys should be focusing on increasing accuracy. It makes a big, big difference in damage. Okay, so let's see what, let's see here if we don't, if we hopefully can hit her this time without missing. So look at that. Look at those misses right there. Those are huge, right? Again, you're going to have to redo this if you miss like that. Okay, that's amazing damage there. There's a mark, hopefully. Okay, there's a mark, but a miss again. So that's a problem again. Okay, now we want this right here. So this holy shield is going to help us get another stack right on right there. See that? So that's what you guys want to do, okay? Make sure you guys do that because that's going to be a massive, massive like advantage for you having that shuriken in place. This is probably going to be the best advantage you're going to have over her, especially if you don't have the deviance. Uh, already set up right so she's gonna die there she's gonna die there but at least you had an extra attack in there right these guys will survive and then you're gonna hope that you guys can do an extra an extra special in there somewhere okay you're gonna cast this now so you can see everybody here is gonna probably get killed yeah so one, one oh there we go Nick survived at least oh no Nick's died okay so everyone's everyone died so you guys have it right so that's that's how you want to approach it but remember this is this is a very high level situation for me right now um, my suggestion to you guys is I would um, I would try your best to do the same setup for lower stages and you guys will see a massive result. Now with Themis, I was trying to show you guys as well too. I, I guess I could still do it. This is a, a lot longer than I expected it to go. But let's back out for a sec and let's do this one here. And now you put her in and I'll show you guys how it's supposed to work, okay? And, and why you want to try this way as well. Okay, so watch. We'll do times two just to speed it up a little bit so you guys can get a general sense of how it works. Okay, so watch what happens here. So Themis is, is incredible in this, especially early stages, because when these when these adds die, when she does final slash on them, she does so much more damage to opponents. Uh, you'll, you'll see, watch. It's just better that you guys see it. Hopefully she, get, she actually does make a kill, though. That's the main thing. Okay, so here's the attack up. Now the sickle is going to go off here. Hopefully kills enough people. Okay, so Blades of Chaos again for an extra Holy Shield. Don't miss. Good. Okay, so here's what you want. You want that to kill like that right there. And look, she'll do that damage again. And she'll keep spamming that when she kills the opponents. Uh, you know, after she does it again and again and again, etc. Et right? So you really want that to not miss. And you want there to be... Yeah, that's it. That's a good. That's a good hit. See that miss right there is gonna cost us a lot. That's gonna cost. All this is gonna cost us big time right here. So luckily we have an extra shield. We can probably avoid the next set of damage for a little bit. Vulcan's hammer. Okay, another Vulcan's hammer. So that cast it twice in a row. That's just a passive that happens. Okay, so now you want final slash to go off again. Okay. So this won't kill anybody else here. Fortitude's on there, so that's great. So here you go, more Sickle Slash. You want this to hit hard, obviously. That, so that was half the damage. It wasn't a crit. That's unfortunate. You want that to kill, but that's not going to kill because everyone's... Yeah, see, not enough damage going through this time around. So here, let's 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 go back to a loon again. So you can see how it works. So that's the, the, the this is just a really tough stage for me. And, and I think this is going to be the problem for a lot of people. You're going to get to a point where... Um, you're gonna get stuck on a stage because it's just too high. You just need more power, and that's the case. But that's the that's the theory behind it. So if you guys can set this up with those relics, you guys are golden. 
Uh, you guys should be able to finish these bosses and get to a fairly high floor until there's a power gap and then you're just going to have to wait and hold up and hopefully you guys get something uh, better to happen for you at that point. Um, here, I'm going to take this hammer out. Uh, let's do this instead. And then I'll take this. I don't need that anymore because I've got the extra shield now. Uh, actually, let's do this and put in this. And let's just do a couple of quick, quick battles. You guys can see the difference in damage, okay? You guys can see a couple of RNGs here that happen. Look at that. Look how much damage. Look how much damage that was, right? And again, almost just a little bit of HP still left. Again, right there. Let's and you guys can look here to see who's doing a lot of damage, right? So it's like Nyx, Elune. My steam did only a little bit again. So he's gonna he's obviously being a little bit of an odd man out here in this. He's giving really the biggest benefit for him right now is he's giving that extra bonus shield, uh, which is keeping them alive. A little longer but you don't you don't necessarily want that so i'm going to play around with that there's a again right there this time my steamer went up everybody went up this time so that's actually much better so this might be a better position for them all right so play around positioning that's going to matter a lot as well let's see if we can yeah see so close so i'm going to keep trying but anyways there you guys go those are the best teams in my opinion floor 44 a tough one but i'm planning to get through it today uh hopefully this, hopefully this helped you set up some teams uh again if you're going to do full-on uh non non demons stage you, this is how you'd want to set up you go one two definitely put themis in there this is going to be your three and then i what i would do is add some aoe here so katarina and having yourself uh dorabella for more aoe so this would be your mass aoe team uh to take out the uh, the ads including the um just make sure you have a counter a counter uh unit for her right so you can click here you can see these are the three counter units so i would you would have to actually add lily and leah right here uh and then put them as actually you know what you would probably put a loon in here instead so this would be kind of your your team here for the non um non-demon team right it's not going to do as well i promise you guys so you will have to have that holy shield relic in place because if you don't look at that full hp she's going to just one shot you at this level at least so at least have the relic in place so you guys can get a holy shield off but at this point if you are at 44 chances are you're already using some of those uh, demons to get holy shield up all right guys it's pain i'll talk to you guys in the next one